This is the best feeling in the whole world to know the wheel is downstairs, it's been cleaned, steam cleaned, prepped, and ready to start working on it because it's going to be a really big job doing what I want to do to that wheel before painting. But, but the good news is it went below 20 degrees last night, there's ice on the pond, it's freezing cold, and I'm going to be downstairs in a nice warm cellar for the next couple of days. And it's such a good thing knowing every morning the only thing I have to do out here is oogle the bikes for a few minutes, change the battery tender wires, and get inside and make more coffee. This is a morning for even extra coffee. That coffee tastes so good. Oh my god, is it cold out there. Am I glad I'm in a cellar today? The wind was so blowing so bad this morning I had to take the bird feeder down. It was banging on a window and my birds were out there. They got so mad at me they all flew away. I'll have to give them extra seeds this afternoon. After a good cup of coffee, this is what I look forward to every morning. The little perp walk of the parts. Saying good morning to my restored parts. Oh my god, every morning this is such a rewarding thing to come down here. Oh my god. But now, now we have to get serious about this because here we got the tires in. We got all the tire working tools. We've got, I'm going to have to buy another table today. In fact, one of the errands for today is going to be to go to Home Depot. I'm going to price out some more tables. I need a new table for my number two computer. I need another table over there. And this project has taken up more tables than I thought it would. But the thing is, you never have. And these tables come from Home Depot, so maybe they have them on sale today or something. Who knows? Anyway, I got these parts cleaned up yesterday. This was really, really floated my boat. I got my wheel. Wow, how nice is this wheel? Well, you can watch TV right through the wheel. How cool is that? The wheel is as clean as ready. Now, the only problem is with this wheel, and it's there's a lot of stuff to be done. There's little there's little tabs. I had to put this over under the on the workbench and show this up close because there's so much work to do to that wheel. It's not going to be a simple one shot thing. That's for sure. And I don't want to compromise it. So here's what happens if you look at this wheel carefully. There's little casting spots where they, I guess, where they inject the molten metal along the ribs. The flat part of the rib, now what they did, of course, once this is cast and joined, I assume it's joined in the foundry or something. There's no wells on it. But there's this big lip here. They polish the outside. They chuck it in a machine and run a tool up here. But they don't, you notice, where the tool would stop, this is beautifully smooth and we have to etch it and clean it, but in here, this is still rough casting. Now, just like the FCR wheels, this is going to require a ton of hand labor. And I'd say probably 80% of it has to be done by hand. But we have this as a, as a little thing. I have a whole bucket of, these were the tools from working on the FCR. And each one of them has a little purpose. There's a wheel that gets in there. I have... The, the thing I bought for Vince's Snowflake Wheels to do some of that. The biggest one are these little things from Harbor Freight that I can get in and do the edge. I can do it by hand or by machine. So I have thin ones, thick ones. This is why I told Thomas, and he may get up here tomorrow, to come up. Maybe we could use a lot of these, these things on his wheel. I don't know. He's got a wheel that needs a lot of corrosion work. But here's the biggest one. These little guys that come from Harbor Freight, and I can get in all these little areas in here, in the spokes. Because anything I can do by machine, of course, is going to be a lot easier. And I've got about a hundred of these little wire brushes, every size, every shape. I never miss a chance to buy wire brushes because I can get in there. It just saves me a lot of work. So here's the bottom line to everything. is we got plenty of tools here. The thing we're missing right now is a big giant block of time because we have a lot of family stuff going on and I'm putting a floor in the kids' bathroom and I'm working on it every day and we're doing some tile work over there and they're doing lighting fixtures. So I try to do a couple hours here, a couple hours there, try to break it up. But anyway, we, because we have this so clean from yesterday, today will be a lot more enjoyable drinking coffee and doing what I want to do. But I have to find out if Karen wants to go shopping now or does she want to go shopping later? Because she, she sets the tone for the whole day. But no matter what we decide to do, either way I have to go. Most of this, I'd say the giant majority of it, is going to be a lot of hand sanding. Because these casting areas, 
if you leave them this way, just not going to be as nice as I want it. And all of the edges getting radius. And this turns into, this is not a one or two day job. This, is a, this becomes a labor of love. And then that primer that goes on, the first coat of primer, is going to need to be sanded. Because the gold that's going to be on here, that's got to be perfectly flat and level before I put any gold on there. So a lot of back masking to be done. It's a labor of love to do wheels. It isn't like you just dip them in a tank or when you powder coat them, you just... <laughs> ah, this, this is now, this is going to be a labor of love. The one thing that always works well for me is I, get a, I have a bunch of these. I probably have 20 or 30 of them. When I take a motorcycle apart, I put all the parts that go to the back wheel in that pleat, in that paste. So this is all parts that need to be restored somehow, polished, cleaned. Uh, this one I think we're going to paint shiny black. Uh, I have a special bolt to block off for the the hole where the the valve stem goes, and I use that over and over again. The disc is pretty pretty nice shape, in fact, for having almost I think it's a twenty eight thousand, twenty six thousand. This is nice, but I want to pull the nuts off, and I think I'll ultimately wind up painting it so it's shiny black, and then I'll that'll I'll cover that also. It'll just make it a little bit nicer, and we will have the time. And for sure, we will have the black. I just have a brand new quart of Bentley black. Well, I couldn't be happier with the way the carbon fiber parts, thank you, Dave Midgley and Dick Hewitt, they just came out great. The, the custom mixed gold paint with the pigment from Amazon, another real highlight of this job. That could have went either way. It worked out great. Somewhere in the course of this winter, we've got four tires left to install. And I tried to, boy, getting a tire off yesterday when, when it was freezing cold, my hands were bleeding. So Karen made this an easy decision this morning. She'd like to do her shopping in the morning, which means I'll have the whole afternoon to work on that wheel. Now just a thought here before I leave for, uh, for our trip to Home Depot. I remember when I first did the work on the 750, the wheels were silver. And I thought, oh, they don't add much to the bike. So I made them black with a green stripe. Well, I had an extra set of wheels from the other, the parts bike. And when I made the wheels green, it changed the whole look of the bike. So now whenever I want to change the look of the bike, typically at the time I change tires, I just swap the wheels. And I can, I can be perfectly honest. I don't know which one I like the best. Well, the day is playing out well. It's warmed up already to 24 degrees. It's like summer. Oh, there's not much that makes you feel better than starting off your day at Home Depot. What could be more fun than a trip to Home Depot? Now, unfortunately, they only have... These, these are not the ones I want. I don't remember where I bought the one I have. But I wanted one that doesn't fold. These that fold, not going to work for me. Well, luckily, I have all my old tile tools. Boy. Right here's my favorite part of Home Depot. Boy, I probably got 10,000 Dremel tool parts. Well, sadly, they didn't have the table I wanted. That was the whole reason I came here, but I got a bunch of little hardware. You never have, you never have enough trips to Home Depot. Back to the shop. Now, being back from Home Depot here, we are really happy. Happy, happy, happy to get to work on this wheel. First thing is I'm going to have to take it off the balancer. And I'm going to have to back mask all the areas that I don't want to get dust on or dirt or grit or grime while I'm doing the grinding. Now, because I've done quite a few wheels in the past, I have a really good, I guess, system is the right word for doing this. Some of it gets a little confusing, and this is one of them. Now, these are sealed bearings, by the way, and if we didn't do this, I don't think it would be the end of the world. But I'm just fussy. I'm just, just, <laughs> I guess I'm an old lady is the bottom line. So the first thing, that has to be sealed up. I don't want to have, in fact, where that's going to rub, I'm going to put another piece of tape down the bottom. I don't want to take a chance 
that I'm going to have some kind of paint build up there or something where there's going to be an interference fit and again just being overly fussy now th to show you I've, I've probably watched every YouTube video on painting wheels and the best one I ever remember there was somebody who had I think it was a triumph and I'm not not belittling somebody I'm just saying this is how different people think differently is he pulled up the bike and jacked it up so he could spin the wheel and just held a can of flat black <laughs> and, and that was it so we're going in the opposite direction these brake discs actually sit on the wheel this is kind of an important thing to have back mass because if you build up paint here instead of tightening the discs metal to metal like I assume it would be you're sandwiching in a layer of paint that obviously is going to either make it add a round in some amount or it's not going to work in your favor now I've I've been real careful about that in the past we'll be real careful about it right now now there's one other thing they're sealed bearings this wheel is hollow so some of this residual grit is going to wind up down in there so what I'm going to do is at the end of this we ho hopefully have these all cleaned up take it outside and blow that out with some compressed air I think that's the only realistic way to do this but as I look at this wheel, now i got to do the rest of these. This, there's some things on here that are going to be really tricky to try to get right. That's why I have that whole thing of tools there, because I don't know which tool is going to work the best. Now this next thing is, I have the valve out of course, and I put Gorilla Tape around there the exact diameter so I can press that in place. Now, I don't want that moving around and being off-center. The Gorilla Tape keeps it exactly centered. And I, don't want, I want this to be just a little bit smaller than the diameter because I don't want to get paint in that hole. I don't want to have to clean it later with a wire brush or anything. And these seal really well. I've used these. I've taken them off one wheel and put them on another one. They seal really well. I have never had any problems with them. They're curvy girl with a K, not a C. So anyway, and if you, you go to the other one, it's, a, it's some kind of porn site or something. But anyway... Here's the thing is to get this to be a nice tight fit when I put that in because that's going to keep it centered. Otherwise what happens is this, this thing's moving around all the time, but the tape is a good trick to keep that bolt centered. And by the way, these are these the sanding sticks, they're similar to the ones that Scott donated to our cause. It doesn't matter, I want to get that area to be nice and smooth. Even though that rubber gasket is so thick, it probably would seal on a piece of sandpaper. I want to start with this being super nice and flat. See that bolt is a nice, really nice tight fit. Keeps it perfectly centered. Now what I want to do is identify the primary side of the motorcycle. There's always one side and it's the side, picture this. When you put the kickstand down, it leans this way. So it's the side you would view. Most people view a motorcycle from the side opposite the kickstand at 90% of the time. If they take a picture or something, it's always from the side opposite the kickstand because the bike is leaning. You get a better view. So I want to make sure that every little detail I can take care of. Now, see these little casting? I'm not sure because I have never seen a video. I would love to see a video of how these wheels are cast. Because it looks like they're cast or forged in two pieces would be a very interesting video but i do want to grind that away and as i'm looking at this there's going to be quite a bit of sanding to be done in there i want to flatten these out and i don't know what tool if any i've got to do a little experiment and which one is going to work the best so this is the little harbor freight sanding discs with 120 grit I want to see if that's going to take this off, like I hope it will. So I want to show this in two stages. I just hit it, and now I've got it a little bit more. But I've got what I'm trying to establish is a nice flat area that I can get all the casting marks off. See, this is the this is a casting that's been painted or powder coated. This is a nice flat surface. 
So the, the first objective here is going to be to do the spokes on the primary side of the wheel and get that all that I have smooth surfaces. So now it's just some 220 paper. I just want to see how quickly I can get these spokes nice and straight and get a nice surface. I'm not not really interested in anything right now except getting those little casting flaws out. And a job like this is going to take a lot of time. These these are again a labor a labor of love. But when it when this is done, because these parts are going to be gold, they're going to really stand out. I I really hope they do anyway. And if they don't, I'll just do that thing of put the bike up on a jack and spray paint them flat black with a can of barbecue paint. Not really. Anyway, this will just take a little time. I'll do one spoke at a time, and then I'll try, maybe on the other one, I'll try a wire brush and see which one works. See, the thing is to try a couple of different methods, a couple of different tools, and see what's going to work the best. Now, I do remember some years of Kawasaki and Suzuki where they actually left these in raw aluminum. I think what they did is painted the wheels and then just hit this with a, a some grinder or sander or something, or polisher. And then these were left where they were painted inside but had these highlights again I don't remember which model and maybe maybe I don't uh, have it exactly right but that is definitely one possibility and I've seen them where they leave the rims polished on the edge and paint the middle of the wheel all kind of possibilities wheels you have a free hand to be competitive now as I go to the next thing now I'll try another tool I don't know what but I know I can do that one in a relatively short time but by the time I'm done with this side of the wheel, I'll figure out what tool is going to work the best. Now, believe it or not, it seems like the wire brush with the, they come steel and copper. The steel wire brush seems to work well, just as good and goes a lot quicker. So. We've already eliminated one of the things out of our, our repertoire here. But we do have to grind these little nubs down with, with the grinder. I don't want to have those nubs. So that's at least, we know the wire brush is going to do a good part of this. Now a side, a side benefit of using a the wire brush instead of a sanding disc it gets a nice radius around everything and it, it absolutely is doing exactly what I want it to do now I wish this was a day I could be doing this outside but the wind is just howling again I don't know where those wind is coming from but what I'll do is just take the towel up at the end every so often because all the dust is here and when I'm not shooting video I put the mask on just to make it this easy but that that seems like what I've eliminated from three or four of the other things I've tried. The best thing is the wire brush. So it's just a lot of labor, but I've got the spokes on this side. At least all the machine work done. That the rest of it's going to have to be by hand. That's for sure. Now these wheels have this writing cast into the center, and there's an easy solution for that. And I know you're going to see that. I don't. I don't want to see that. In fact, and here's the solution. Just grind it down, and that'll that'll make it. I think that'll just make it one more reflective spot that you can see the sun reflecting off without having to look at all this the gobbly goop here. Now we got two flattened out. Boy, that's, how, that's what that's starting to look like. That, that's definitely going to be an improvement. And now see all of this grinding here. Now what I do is just take this, this towel out. You can see it's all in the towel. Before it builds up too bad and shake it out outside. And just, or just switch. In this case we just have plenty of towels. Switch towels. Now it's just a shame that uh, our Harbor Freight 
if this was a smaller version of this, I could get in the corners better. But it's definitely useful having this. Not really sure how useful that's going to be it'll be of some use but back in the, all these angles and edges I have to get all of that by hand how, so I think you get the idea a lot of it you can do chunks of it this area here I think well let's try it I think I now nah, I can't really see if this was a little bit smaller I could get down in there but but there'll be a lot of this I'm leaving this till the end I wanted to try to do the hub and this does take the stuff off relatively quickly I don't know why I'm I'm not thinking it's true. Yeah, that's taken. I have, to, I have to get a new pad, too. But we're actually taking some of it off, and I'm trying to do some of it in real time, but obviously something like this is going to take several days just to get it ground down. Several sessions, anyway, since we don't have full days with the way our schedule's worked out today. But... Even on a partial day, we're getting, if I can get a lot of this done, the more I get done, I'll sleep better at night. One of the more, one of the more difficult things to get is going to be to get, uh, I'll probably have to do it, well I could try with the Dremel tool, I'll probably have to get in there by hand. I don't want to see those little marks if I possibly can. I've got this kind of settled out, i got the spark, the spoke settled out. I'm saving the actual rim thing for the very end. This is the labor intensive part to do. That, but it's not on a wheel jig. This, I can get my hand in here on everything. But in here, and this has really been a lot of work. But I'm going to try to get in there with the Dremel tool. I just would like to smooth that out just a little bit. Oh, I can final sand that by hand and get some of that roughness out of there. But that, see what's going to happen is when I prime this, that's going to fill with primer. So that should be, and I want to see a nice, just I want to look at and see the light reflecting. I don't want to see a casting. The whole idea is to make the whole thing as casting free as possible. Of course, there's only so much you can do with, with the power tools, but the majority of it now, all these casting edges... I'm taking some 180 grit sandpaper and a, a painting stick. And this is industrial grade Norton sandpaper that I got from Dave Midgley. That's a little bit more heavy duty than body shop stuff. I think it's made for machine shop work, but what it does, it cuts really quickly. So I wanted to get, because I don't know how they cast these wheels. They come together and there's a ridge around the middle. And obviously I don't want to see the ridge. So this is one way. Now I think I've pretty much exhausted what I'm going to be able to do with the uh, with the power tools. But from this point on, and we got a lot of hours of working on this. Those FCR wheels were just they just went on forever. But I will have those wheels on the day I die, and they never will be any less shiny than they are right now. And it's always a question of trying to find a tool that you can get into these little nooks and crannies. And if you start keeping track of how many hours you have invested, mm, it'll take a lot of the fun away, that's for sure. So we're going to work on this, try to get as much done on one side as we can. But I know, as an example, if I thought I was going to get this done in one or two days, not happening. To prep this wheel up and get it smooth for the first coat of primer, it'll be, a, it'll be a miracle if I get it done in two days. Because I'm so fussy, and because at the end of this, I want to hand sand everything. See, I don't want to see that casting mark. Up in here, there's, there's a casting mark right down the middle of the wheel. 
I don't want to see that. So it's a lot of labor. It just takes time. But in the end, you have something, and you don't only have it unless you're flipping bikes. You have it forever. Again, there's another use for our sanding sticks. It gets right in there, and it's just that same old thing. It just takes some time, takes some effort. And this is where being a lifelong modeler comes into it. Because if, if you're a modeler, you know, everything you do, you're planning for something a year, maybe six months, a year away. It, there's no instant gratification. It's not like a computer app where you just dial something up and you say, oh, I'm an expert. Look at this. Now, it's always planning for the future and being willing to put in a lot of hours. And when you, when you take that and transfer it into motorcycling, doing a motorcycle is a piece of cake. Well, today we got a really good start on this wheel, and I, it's a, it's a chunk. I can't, a job like this, you can't even think about doing it in one or two days. It's just time consuming, but the end result, the end result will be so worth it. I'm, I'm positive of it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and you'll continue watching and see where this wheel winds up when it's in gold. It's a long ways away, but we're getting there slowly but surely. And of course, thanks for watching.